Greetings, everybody, and welcome to the Metal Magdalene with Jet right here on Metal Messiah Radio. Today is part of our Black Metal Underground special. We have with us a special guest. We have Morty from the Black Metal Band Crafty, and welcome to the show, Morty. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I'm really excited for this. So, Crafty from Denver, Colorado, what is the Black Metal Underground scene like in Denver, Colorado, Morty? Um, over the past two years, we've had a few bands surfacing where, I don't know if it was just a coincidence or good timing, um, but everybody kind of knows each, uh, everybody knows each other now, um, but for example, there's Helleborus, who just put out an album, um, Saris Saddam's about to release one, Augur just released the EP, um, and then we have Amducius, and there's a couple other bands, Echolhaft. Um, and I don't really know what happened. Um, a few years ago, there was a very small black metal scene, um, and there was this singer who, I think he got he got found out to be like a child molester or something horrible, and he killed himself. And like for a good year or so, there was just like nothing going on. Um, so I think like. I think like just the reset button got hit on black metal in Denver and like everything has changed now um, and it's just blossoming. And, and now was this, you know, was black metal always like a genre that you were drawn to? Um, I wouldn't say as long as I would, you know, hope to. Um, you know, there's the whole true cult gimmick and you know, I'm from America in the first place, so I can't even pretend I'm European or anything like that. But um, I think more and more, especially like like kids, the younger generations are being pulled toward because it's just something different. I don't know, black metal is kind of just like, a, um, how would I say that? I don't know, it's just kind of like bouncing off all the uh, boring, cliché, kinds of pop music that's out there and it just like it just has its own kind of emotional expression um but i've not i think i've been listening to black metal for maybe 10 or 15 years i discovered it in high school at like a local record store um called angelo's and they have a few locations in denver but i didn't even know what black metal was and i was buying these cds from bands that had like similar cover art um, but I, I really didn't even know how to find out about it on the internet, and it wasn't until years later that I realized like it was a cultural movement, too. Um, yeah, I think I was just drawn to it because it was dark, and it connected with kind of the emotional turbulence I was going through as a young man, and I think that's probably the same for a lot of other fans. Now, once you discovered this music, um, who were some of your influences now in this genre um i've always been drawn to like the swedish bands and it's weird because it's i also listen to other genres of metal and no matter what it is it tends to be the swedish bands <laughs> i like i don't know what's going on with that country but it just <laughs> works there so um dissection and battery one of my favorite bands is a uh, shining in there they don't call themselves black metal but they uh I mean, they're pretty much black metal infused with uh, jazz and blues and other things, and they're like more on the depressive end of black metal rather than the, you know, the traditional kind of cliche Satanist take on it. And now, what inspired you to start this band, and, and why call it Craftian? Okay, well, um, about the same time I discovered black metal, um, I've always been into reading. And I had like a used bookstore down the street for me. And um, I used to go in there and poke around. And one day I found H.P. Uh, Lovecraft, like a collection of his tales. And I think almost anybody has like heard his name. It's really easy to remember. So I was like, okay, I'll check this out. I was kind of into Stephen King and Peter Straub at the time. Um, and I was instantly hooked. There's just this very... I don't know, unique route that his stories take, which uh, came from the weird tale genre, like in the 1920s, but usually it's like there's some kind of, uh, the protagonist usually is important, but it's like he discovers some, um, 
like some letter or newspaper clipping or something's like, whoa, that's not right. I'm going to follow this trail. And then usually it leads to some kind of traveling or uncovering more details and it sends them on a trip to go uncover some horrible secret that human beings should never know about the universe. And usually the character is driven to madness or commits suicide or both or something like that. Um, and I was hooked because these stories made me feel a way I've never felt in my life, which is like you're horrified, but at the same time, like you're very excited or intrigued, almost like ambivalence. And I kind of got addicted to reading these stories and like scaring myself to sleep. <laughs> but at the same time, I was getting really interested in metal and exploring, uh, you know, writing songs mostly uh, on guitar, and, you know, at the time I didn't know that there, you know, were other bands that have done Lovecraft, and um, there's a few out there, like I think Cradle of Filth was probably one of the early ones, um, but I'd never heard like an entire album on Lovecraft, and I was so passionate about these stories, like I kind of wanted to interpret them in my own way, while also like retelling them, so other listeners who would hear the music would be like, oh yeah, this story, you know, The Outsider or Dagon, like, yeah, this is this is the way I felt when I was reading it too. So, And then Craftion, you asked the name, it's just a combination of the adjective Lovecraftian, which describes any kind of story or film or whatever it is that relates to his work. And then he uses the word eon, like throughout all of his stories, so we just kind of combine those two and... So that way, uh, most people who are familiar with his work would kind of instantly recognize what we're all about. And now, uh, what are the names of the other people in the band? Okay, um, so we all took stage names based on um, mythological figures um, within his stories. So our drummer is Ragorthua. And um, he played with me in uh, a power metal band uh, several years ago. We've been pretty close. Then there's Ithaqua. He's the bass player. Um, he fronts his own doom metal band in Denver called uh, Thorns of the Campus. They're really good. And then um, there's Thagua. That name's kind of hard to pronounce. <laughs> um, and he's been my friend for quite a long time. He's actually never played in an extreme metal band, but he's always kind of been a listener and interested in it. And he's been in a few kind of heavier power metal acts uh, in Denver, so we're a, we're a four-piece. And now you guys are about to release your debut album, Cosmic Reawakening. Now, you guys self-release this, right? Um, yeah, it's totally independent. Um, I had spent so much time on it, I didn't really want to waste even more time shopping labels. And um, another black metal band I mentioned uh, here in Colorado, Hella Boris, had used um, Asher Media, which is a PR company, and had great results uh, through this guy, John Asher. So we've been using him, and I've been really happy, and obviously he's the one who helped to set this interview mm -hmm. Uh, up with you. And now, how did you told us that already? How you approached this album lyrically, right? You just kind of went through the Lovecraft um, books and just, you know, picked some stories out of there, right? Is that what you're saying? How you approached yeah. it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And well, I can add more lyrically. Um, I felt it would be kind of doing Lovecraft a disservice to like write my own lyrics when he's already one of the most accomplished horror writers of all time. And he has a very like specific way of writing. Um, so most of the lyrics I'm trying to, because what's cool is he wrote in the 20s and now all of his works are um, in the public domain. So they're kind of free to use, which is cool. So I did my best to use as many of his original words as possible in the lyrics, and then um, probably like 25% of it is me writing in his style just to fill in gaps where like certain phrasing wouldn't work. And um, I'm, a, I'm, a I'm a literature teacher at a high school, so I hope that I can at least pretend to write very close to how he would. So. I'm hoping that anyone flips to the lyric booklet and can't tell the difference between, you know, where he starts and I leave off or 
vice versa. And so how did you pro approach this album then musically? Um, so typically, um, I tend to read more Lovecraft in the winter when it's dark and gloomy and kind of scary out. Same thing with listening to black metal. And um, I usually, like, maybe after reading the story, I'll noodle, noodle around on the guitar and just kind of find, like, you know, like a theme or just a melody that kind of seems to fit with the feel of the story overall. And then maybe I'll kind of follow the structure of the story. And most listeners will probably find that um, most of the songs are kind of structurally, structurally similar because the stories are too. So usually, you know, it starts out with some kind of slow, mysterious exploration, and then the character descends into madness when he uncovers this uh, horrifying mystery about the universe. Um, so yeah, usually I just kind of noodle around till I find something that works, and then I try to like shape the story into that. Um, but it's our first album, so I don't consider myself an expert, and I'm looking forward to, you know, reading the constructive criticism to see what I can do better for the next album. So tell us a little bit now about the cover art, what it depicts, and how it relates to the album. Sure. Um, it was kind of cool how I found that artist. I, uh, I, um use reddit quite often and there's a subreddit for lovecraft so like um it's like a little community of people who are as passionate as me and sometimes people will upload artwork that they've came across on the internet and i found uh this particular piece that was painted um it was a painting of cthulhu like not totally dissimilar from our cover art um, but kind of a different concept, and I just like fell in love with them. Like I had to figure out who this guy is. He would be like perfect for what I want, and so I kind of had to like reverse Google image search, and then I found it connected to this uh, um, Deviant Art page, and it ended up being this guy named uh, Nick who lives in Russia. And thank goodness he responded to my email, and he agreed to uh, do the piece, and we kind of wanted to. Um, some artwork that was like obviously Lovecraftian, so we have the ocean, we have Cthulhu like emerging from the sea, um, and then we threw up um, like a kind of gothic looking castle as, um, on the land there, and then uh, we also threw in the moon, which comes into a lot of his stories and the stars, and we tried to get it uh, tried to make it really cosmic looking, and I also didn't want to do the like cliche black and white like black metal cover, so I wanted something that kind of stuck out. And now, have you guys played out yet? Um, we haven't. So we've got six shows lined up, and um, we thought that since we're new, it'd be kind of dumb to do a tour right off the bat. Um, you know, playing weekday shows in towns where people may not know us. So the way all of our schedules worked is we set aside weekends. So, you know, like every Friday or Saturday for the next couple months, we're um, driving out to, well, we're starting in Denver, but then Cheyenne, Fort Collins, and Colorado Springs, and then Salt Lake City. Um, what else am I missing? I think... I want to say there's there's one more. I just don't have the dates in front of me. And then Inquisition and uh, Uada, who are coming through Denver, um, are pretty big black metal acts. We just landed the opening gig for that. So we're, we're going to be pretty busy. But no, we haven't played live yet, but we are ready. We start in two weeks wow. opening up our... Uh, we're doing our like debut and CD release show all together on the same night. But we're all from other bands, and like most people on the scene know all of us from other bands, so it's not like we're exactly nobodies, it's just kind of like a new project that emanated from these other bands that we're in, so like, luckily we should have a pretty good crowd there. And now, when you bring this show live, what can people expect to see? I mean, you're a black metal band, so are you going to be using like a lot of imagery, or, or what's going to be going on with your actual stage show? Um, so, I think uh, black metal is interesting, interesting in the fact that like it's supposed to, you're like supposed to 
be a non-conformist, but by conforming to all of these same ideals and like conventions of black metal. So, you know, of course there's going to be, um, we're going to be painted up, we're going to have hoods and there's going to be, you know, a fog machine, but we want to bring in some of those, uh, Lovecraftian elements too. Um, so like the robes that we had made for us, like we're supposed to be, um, kind of like priests, of the great old ones. And, we uh, will have some kind of 1920s looking lanterns on stage. Oh, cool. yeah. And I plan to have um, a prop or like a copy of the Necronomicon there too. So um, pretty much like the black metal cliche stuff that people like want to see, um, plus a little bit of the uh, Lovecraft edge too. And now if, now, hey, are you guys looking for a label? Um, we would definitely love to hear from labels. Um, we haven't talked to any as of yet, but we are working on new material and, um, I'm, I don't know, I just have like never ending creative energy and I really don't see this project ever dying out. And as you know, Lovecraft has over a hundred stories and poems and then there's like just this mountain of fan fiction, a lot of it written by his his own contemporaries during his time, like, there's, we'll never run out of material to write about. <laughs> so, so yeah, we would love to hear from the label. And, and where can people pick up a copy of the album and check out more of what you guys are doing? Do you have any sites out there? Yeah, um, we are running Bandcamp. I, I think that tends to be the most popular website among uh, the younger generations, so... We've got our uh, physical CD up for sale there. We hope to do a vinyl soon. That's just outrageously expensive, but um, it is. we are planning it. And then we have some other merch there. Um, our t-shirts just arrived in the mail yesterday, so I'm going to put those up. But we have um, patches and posters and so on. And then for the people who don't buy the physical stuff, we'll be you know, um, on Spotify and iTunes and Amazon and Google Play and all that as well. All right, well, there you have it. Craftian has a new album out, Cosmic Reawakening. You could check their websites out to find out more about what's going on with the band. And Morty, thank you for taking the time to do this with us here this evening. Hey, thank you, Joe. It was a great time. I appreciate the opportunity.